in season and out of season, a Bible teaching ministry with Father Tom DiLorenzo. Good day. The name of the telecast is In Season and Out of Season, and I'm Father Tom DiLorenzo from Holy Rosary in Winthrop. Last Sunday, we experienced the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ over the whole universe, that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that his kingship is not like the kingship of the world. He reigned on the cross, and that's where he reigned from, so that we, you and I, might have a new life as our forgiveness, as forgiveness of sins come through the blood of Jesus. So I want to say to you, thank God for Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Where would I be without Jesus? I would not even think about it. I'm reading from the sixth chapter of St. John. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing. They all needed a touch from Jesus, just like us. We need a touch from Jesus so that we'll feel better, so that we'll be healed. The signs he was doing for the sick, Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was very near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test Philip, for he himself knew what he was about to do. Philip answered the Lord, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are that among so many people? This little boy is, was brought to Jesus by Andrew. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. Andrew brought the little boy to Jesus for the multiplication. And Andrew brought the Greeks to Jesus in the 11th chapter of St. John. Andrew is filled with glory by bringing people to Jesus. But what, of that, uh, what is that among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So they sat down about 5,000 in number. Now that's not counting the women and children. They only counted the men. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish as much as they wanted. Well, how could you get all this bread and all this fish for thousands of people? Jesus multiplied it. You might say this, God multiplies, he doesn't divide. God multiplies, he doesn't divide. If you are thinking about division within your family, you have nothing to do with the Lord. It's all about multiplication all about addition, all about loving people. It's not about division. You know, if you're, uh, you're talking against your pastor, you're doing the devil's work. It's wrong. It's wrong. God multiplies. He doesn't divide. So they had bread and fish for as many as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets full. Now how could that happen? It was the multiplication of the bread and the fish. I know people in uh, Texas who went to one of the poor areas and they had only two chickens. And there were people that had to be fed. And it was in a dump. That's where the people lived. And you know what? They had enough 
food and some left over from the two chickens. Now, I'm going to tell you, two chickens don't last. I, I've, we can eat a chicken in our house with two people. But this lasted. All the two chickens fed all the people in the dump. God multiplies. He doesn't divide. When the people saw the sign, what sign? The sign of the multiplication of the fish and the loaves, that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. They want to make him king. They want to make him king. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. You see, Jesus was tempted uh, with this experience. What do you want to reign on? A throne or the cross? And he runs to the hills to pray. I tell you, it would be easier to sit on a throne than to die on a cross. But Jesus did that out of love for us, out of love for you, out of love for me. He shed his blood so that we, you and I, would become the children of God. So you see, he is tempted by this, but he resists the temptation by running to the hills. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea began rough because of a strong wind that was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. When you take Jesus into your life, your problems are not solved, but your problems I looked at through the eyes of Jesus that he can help you with your problems. There is problems, no, no problem so big that God cannot help you with. God cannot help you with. We just, uh, we just experienced people talking to us about this big problem. How do I deal with this big problem? Ask Jesus to help you. You can't deny the problem, but ask Jesus to help you. I had to go someplace uh, in Tennessee, and I hadn't preached to a crowd before for five years, and I was kind of upset. How am I going to deal with this problem? I haven't preached to crowds for over five years. But I asked Jesus to help me. And guess what? He helped me, and it was a great success. Because Jesus was invited into my life, he helped me. And the people loved what I had to say. What did I tell them? I told them all about Jesus and all about the miracles that I have seen and witnessed. Let me tell you about Jean. Jean has been cancer-free for 13 years. She was given three months to live 13 years ago. But I'm going to ask you to pray for Jean because right now another cancer has grown. A different kind has grown. And we want to pray that God would heal Jean through the power of the cross today, that this tumor would shrink to nothing. We ask this in faith in the name of Jesus the Lord. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. How did he get into the boat? He walked on the sea is what he did. But the people are wondering. He didn't go with them. 
He didn't start off with them, but he ends up with them. They're perplexed, to say the least. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. I'm going to tell you, the world is looking for Jesus. Unless people preach the word of God and love people, they're never going to find Jesus. You know what Jesus is going to say to you when you die? I know what he's going to say. First of all, are you the person that welcomed him into your life? And second of all, did you learn how to love? Did you learn how to love? I tell you, that question is a very big question that the Lord's going to ask us, did you learn how to love? And you know what? That's in our everyday life. Everyday life. When they found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? They're perplexed. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Well, the sign always points to Jesus. You are looking for me not because you saw a sign, but that you filled your tummies with bread and fish. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him, the Son of Man, that God the Father has set his seal. What is the seal that the Father has set upon Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? That's plural, the works of God. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, singular, that you believe in him whom the Father has sent. So the opus dei, or the work of God, is to surrender our lives to Jesus. That's the, that's the work of God. But you see, when you do that, God asks you to go out and love people, heal people, bless people. I was in the restaurant uh, just about a couple of weeks ago. We went to Javelli's, and uh, I had two people with me. And when I got there, I saw that someone from our parish was there. And, you know, she was with a man. And she had just said to the man, I wish we could take you to see Father Tom because he was going for tests. And who walks in but Father Tom? I walked in. They brought the man over to me. I prayed with him. Not too long, because you know what? He wasn't used to it. Just said a short prayer. And his tests proved to be good. You know, these things that happen, happen to people who have faith. She had just said to the man, I wish we could go see Father Tom. And I walked into the place, and I had a good meal too, chicken parmesan. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Do you know what manna means? Manna means what is it? That's what it means. Manna equals what is it? This is the what is it that came down from heaven and fed the people for 40 years. This is the what is it, the manna that came down from heaven and fed the people. Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. That's Jesus. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven, that's Jesus, and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Sounds like the woman at the well, too. Sir, 
give me this water always so I don't have to come down and drink from the well. So they want this bread. The bread of God is Jesus himself. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, yet you do not believe. Everything that comes from the Father and all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never reject. I love that, that verse, John 6, 37. No one who comes to me will I ever reject. Jesus is not into rejecting people. You know, people have asked me when they get sick, was it because of something that I did? Absolutely not. It had nothing to do with what you did or didn't do. You're sick because we live in the world and there's sickness in the world. But you know what? There's healing also. Doctors, go to the best doctors, but also get prayer. I always send people to the best doctors. Find the doctor that helps you, and you will be healed by the grace of God. But also, don't stop with the doctor. Get prayer that God will just do something. Just, just last Saturday, uh, Betty was in the congregation, Betty Mitchell. She has fourth stage cancer, and she's had it for about four or five years, and it doesn't grow. The doctor said to Betty, you're a miracle. Betty said, I know it. She's got fourth stage cancer that never has grown anymore. That's God. That's God. She goes to the best doctors and she gets the prayer. This is wonderful. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of what he has given me, but I should raise it up on the last day. What's the will of Jesus? What's the will of the Father? It tells us this, that I would lose nothing of what he has given me, but that I would raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Do you believe in the Son? If you believe in the Son and have given him your life, you have eternal life. It starts now. Many years ago, when people were baptized as babies or as adults, they said, what do you ask from the church? And the answer was eternal life. Today, the answer is that he'd be baptized. I like the eternal life much better because Jesus Christ gives us that life that is eternal. And I will raise them up on the last day. Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. Do not, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws you and me. Yes, the Father has drawn us to Jesus. It is written in the prophets that they shall all be taught by God, that they should all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. This is Jesus saying this. If you've learned from the Father, you go to Jesus. Let's continue. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. That's Jesus. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I tell you, Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna, what is it, in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that a person may eat of it and not die. 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. He's talking about the Eucharist now. He's talking about the Eucharist. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The person who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He's talking about the Eucharist now. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike that which your ancestors ate and died, but the person who eats this bread will live forever in heaven. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? You're talking about disciples now. now. You're not talking about people come to church once a week. These people left their homes, their fathers, their mothers to follow Jesus. And now he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. They're saying, this is difficult to believe. He's talking about cannibalism. No, he's talking about the Eucharist. But just then, Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining about it. And he said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless the Father draws them. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. My. Jesus didn't tell them to come back. Why? Because he meant what he said and he said what he meant. But it would be at the Eucharist. They did not believe. They thought he was talking about cannibalism. So they left him. These were disciples, you know, that had left mother, father, sister, brother for Jesus. And they leave Jesus now because they think he's talking out of his head. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you wish to go away? These are the apostles. Do you wish to go away? Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, though one of the twelve, was going to betray Jesus. You see, this sixth chapter of St. John is so important. John does not give us uh, a Last Supper experience of the Eucharist. He gives us the experience in John 6, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I ask you to open your Bible to the Gospel of John and reread the sixth chapter. Read it in silence and see what God says to you as you read his word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. This has been In Season and Out of Season with Father Tom DiLorenzo. And remember that this ministry is supported only by the donations of listeners, so please help as the Lord leads you. Father Tom DiLorenzo, P.O. Box 602, East Boston, Mass., 02128. In Season and Out of Season. Oh.